Hello friends, welcome back to the ASP.NET Core tutorial. Today we are going to see uh, the IOC container in ASP.NET. What is it? How it is built in? What are the benefits of it? Uh, in the theoretical session. Today we are not going to see any practical, uh, practical uh, coding section. So let's get started. So the article is already available on infologs.in. So I have loaded the article from the tutorials home under the ASP.NET Core article section on the infologs.in website. So a lot of time uh, in our previous video tutorial we have seen that IOC container, IOC, IOC container. I have uh, talked a lot of time this word but now we are we will see what is ioc container okay the ioc stands for inversion of control okay so uh, it's an asp.net core framework includes built-in ioc containers for automatic dependency injections if you are not aware of dependency injections i'll suggest you to please visit our previous video tutorial where we have discussed uh, the dependency injection in detail to see the video tutorial i'll request you to go to the youtube.com slash web boostings or just go to youtube.com and search for info logs okay so you'll see this so here under the playlist sections we have created a simple playlist of ASP.NET core video tutorials. So here in our last video tutorial you will see the ASP.NET core dependency injections and configuration of singleton scoped and transient service lifetime. Right this is the most important video till now. So before watching this current video, to video tutorial I will suggest you to watch this dependency injection video tutorial and then come back to the IOC container description. Right, so it will give you an overview what is dependency, dependency injection and how it affects the IOC containers. Okay, now a simple <coughs> suggestion provided. Now let's come back to the article. As the IOC container is mostly uh, done for the uh, automatic dependency injection, the built-in IOC container is a simple yet effective container. So let's understand it, how it works. So currently we have uh, the following important interfaces and classes for the built-in IOC container. Okay, I hope uh, while talking about this, uh, you should get reference in our previous video tutorial where we have already using this, uh, this some of the classes and interfaces in our application. Okay, so here we have uh, two interfaces, uh, iService provider and iService collection. If you go to the previous video tutorial, uh, here you'll see under the startup class service con uh, configure services method, we are already using the iService collection interface. What is this? This provides all the built-in services as well as if you want to register a new service, that is also possible with the iService collection, right? Okay. So uh, some of the classes are service provider, service collection, service descriptor, sorry it's, so it should be a service descriptor, then service collection, service extension, service collection, container builder, extension. Okay, so let's see uh, one by one. So let's go with the i service collection. Okay, the i service collection. We can register application services with a built-in IOC container in the configuration method of the startup class by using the iService collection. And this interface is an empty interface. It just inherits the iList service descriptor. Okay, it's just a collection of service descriptor and we have already used the service descriptor over here in our previous video tutorial. How to register the service, uh, custom service for the dependency injection, right? So this is the direct way and this is the extension method way. So indirectly, 
we are doing this kind of stuff internally right service descriptor that is the interface and then what kind of inter, uh, instance you want so that my logger classes right so here i have created a simple i log uh, interface in our previous video tutorial and that uh, uh, interface is implemented on uh, my logger class right and that registers over here so whenever uh, anyone requests for a i log so it will provide them instance of my logger class okay according to the service lifetime whether it's a scope it's transient and it's single run if you don't know about uh, the service lifetime i'll again suggesting you to watch our previous video tutorial then you'll get a clear idea about it okay coming back to the article so uh, the service you add the, uh, in the service collection type instance it actually creates an instance of a service descriptor and adds it to the list okay so second is i service provider i service provider includes get service method the service provider class implements the i service provider interface which returns the registered services with a container we cannot instantiate a service provider class because it's a constructor uh, marked with internal access modifier okay so here i will go to the our default controller here we have used the request services and then we are using the get service okay so we have a get service which is a uh, implements the i service provider this is a service provider class which uh, gives us the get service access so we can from any method we can access any service which is registered in the i service collection right okay now the class we'll see the classes uh, the first one is service collection service extension class includes the extension method related to service registration which can be used to add service with lifetime like adding a singleton transient and scoped extension method defined in that in this class so to show this let's try to go for service lifetime okay it's an enumeration service lifetime okay and uh, service collection service extension let's jump into that class i'll type here service collection service extension okay see we have a different types of uh, service lifetime that is add scoped extension methods available that we are talked about here oh, where, where was that okay startup.cs like this services dot add single turn add scoped okay this is the extension method which is registered over there and then we are getting this uh, method directly access right so right now i don't need this so close it then service collection container builder extension okay class includes the builder service provider extension method which creates and returns an instance of service provider okay so again service provider is here okay so again we can't access or instantiate this uh, service provider class okay there are three ways to get an instance of i service provider okay all the three uh, ways we have already uh, done uh, and used uh, in our previous video tutorial practically okay so this is just a we can say this is a summary video so you'll get a clear idea about how the internal structure is working so here using the i application builder okay so i application builder that is already we are using uh, like get services of uh, I log so here you can see sorry in the default controller we are using the get services of I log T huh? type of I log or you can also uh, write the code like this okay uh, but uh, this is in uh, uh, by using the I application builder so 
uh, again go back to the startup class and uh, in the inside the configure section sorry we have already an i application builder right so here app dot application services what is the return type of it so it returns the i service provider right so again here i service provider rovidr okay wait it's okay where service is equal service provider services and then services dot get service of i log okay and then we can create a instance of a my logger class and then l double o g e r logger okay right log we got this okay so this is the way simple uh, we can access the uh, <coughs> services by using i application builder interface second is http context that we have used in our uh, default controller so here http context dot uh, request services and then we are casting it to the i log and then we are calling that internal uh, that uh, method which is available in my logger class okay this is right log and right log overloaded method and in the next i service collection so uh, this is also already available in the startup.cs i service collection and here you can also instantiate uh, the build service provider okay like services c r b i c e s services dot build service provider creates a service provider container containing service from the provided i service collection right okay again here you can pass the where the scope or service options right and you will get the service provider and then you can uh, manage it accordingly so this was a simple overview of uh, the ioc container built in ioc container uh, you can go ahead and uh, actually we don't need to worry about all these classes because we are not uh, directly working on this okay so majorly what we are doing we are just using the dependency injections registering of services uh, under the configuration section right like this way whether it's a single turn it's a transient service it's a scoped service uh, that is dependent on your requirement or how uh, what kind of instance uh, you want it in your application where, wherever required okay whether it can be a constructor injection it can be a method injections right this way right so i think you have uh, uh, understood uh, whatever we discussed in the ioc container example so i request you to if you like this video please share it on uh, uh, a social media platform and also do comments on the videos um, if you have any queries related to the programming languages to just we are an email away just send us an email we'll try to resolve your problems as soon as possible okay uh, to get in touch with us we have a uh, uh, we are available on uh, the facebook.com slash infologs uh, infologs in uh, on the twitter handle we have we are available on uh, at the rate infologs underscore in and on a reddit we are available on reddit.com slash u slash infologs so i'll just request you to uh, follow us on all this uh, social media platform actually we are everywhere right so if you have uh, any issues while learning or while practicing just let us know uh, we'll try to resolve your problem as soon as possible right uh, till then thank you for watching and never stop learning bye bye